Hey there once again YouTube, I am back, don't worry I'm still around monitoring things almost daily, uh, even though I'm not putting out content as much lately. Here we are at my Steamboat Geyser 2019 page, remember to check this every time you think Steamboat Geyser has erupted, or if you think it's about to erupt, just check here, uh, or you could check the University of Utah Seismographs as well if you want to keep an eye on that. But I try to update this page as soon as I see a Steamboat Geyser eruption, and sure enough, it did erupt this morning. The 37th eruption of 2019 occurred at 1222 UTC, September 25th, 2019, which would be 622 AM Mountain Time, same date. So that was this morning, about 12 hours ago or so, because right now is 6.43 p.m. Pacific Time, September 25th, 2019. Again, I'm starting to work full time now because of family, and it is, I can only do about one to two videos or blog posts per week. And I'm still going to try to do my monthly updates. They, they might be a little late. Um, the monthly updates on my website here, as you can see under the more drop down menu, monthly volcano updates and the upward substance update, which I do do about every two, two and a half months or so. Um, so yeah, here's the 37th eruption of 2019 continues to shatter the record since it broke the record on August 27th of this year. 37th eruption, guys. That's a lot for one year, and you can see it here on the helicopter from YM. This is on my website right here. So that's that right there. Let's move on. Here you have the past seven days, magnitude 4.5 and above for the world. Now we do see the most recent is this 4.6 here in Russia, which Russia does get some quakes every now and then, so it's not too strange. However, one thing that was strange was the 5.6 in Pakistan. Again, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth. Um, whenever you see an earthquake occur offshore, especially off the shore of the west coast of the United States, or in a country where the USGS does not technically operate, if they cannot determine the depth, they put 10 kilometers as the automatic depth if they do not know what the depth is. And that does happen from time to time, especially with earthquakes off the west coast of the United States along the Blanco Fracture Zone right here. Um, so yeah, we had the 5.6 in Pakistan, which was pretty strong for a 5.6. It did kill a few people, destroy a few roads, damage a lot of buildings. So it was very surprising that it was labeled as a 5.6. And uh, we're not going to take a look at that right now because I'm a little short on time. I want to take a look at something else in this video. But I'm just showing you an overview of what happened the past week. And we did have a magnitude 6.0 in Puerto Rico, which was pretty popular on the news. Again, supposedly 10 kilometers in depth. That was on the 24th. And also, so was the 5.6 in Pakistan. So September 24th, yesterday was pretty busy, guys. Indonesia, as usual, seeing lots of quakes. We saw 6.0 and we also saw a magnitude 6.5 just a little bit ago actually a few hours ago in that region indonesia usually gets hit pretty freaking hard some additional quakes in albania in greece 5.1 ongoing seismicity there a few quakes along the Aleutian island chain 5.3 and probably due to volcanics in that area or the local subduction but notice again we as usual we have a big blank spot of magnitude 4.5s for the united states which is usually how it goes, guys. I mean, look at the whole world. The whole world gets smacked with 4.5s and above. The United States, not as much. It's usually very calm in this section of the world right here. So we're very lucky to live here. Who knows how long that will last? You never know when that could change. So definitely thanking God that we have it pretty calm here as of late. Now, one thing I wanted to focus on. I wanted to talk about Long Valley Supervolcano, which is a supervolcanic caldera, which is a caldera is a depression caused by a massive eruption. Actually, there are two types of calderas. There are calderas that are caused by a massive emptying of the magma chamber below. And there's also something called a subsidence caldera, which is actually what Kilauea and some other calderas around the world are from. Instead of from an, an all of a sudden a huge eruption occurring causing a caldera, subsidence calderas are from lava and um, extruding from the magma system somewhere else. Or subsiding and the magma is going into a different chamber far, far away. It's from, basically from the ground subsiding and going down instead of going up. But Long Valley Caldera is an explosion caldera. You could call it a crater, but it is so big, guys. It is a caldera. Now, last night, we saw a rapid fire swarm, guys. Isn't this interesting? A rapid fire swarm at Long Valley Caldera, which would be the second in, what, a week? 
I think it's only been about a week since the last rapid fire swarm here. And most of what you see here are earthquakes, guys. Most of what you see are earthquakes. Still no harmonic volcanic tremor has been detected as of yet, which is a good sign. I'm glad, but I'm still keeping a close eye out for it because this is some pretty intense seismicity for Long Valley Caldera for a long time. I'm going to say maybe a few years, maybe even longer, maybe even longer than a decade. Um, but as you can see here, here, let's go back if it'll let me. There we go. 911 earthquakes in the past month. Notice this is on volcanoes.usgs.gov. 911 earthquakes in the past month. Almost a thousand in one month. That is huge, guys. I mean, you know, seismicity hasn't been too great. Most of them, 547 have been below magnitude 1, 296 have been below magnitude 1 and 2, 57 between 2 and 3, and oh, wait a second, magnitude 6, 11, there have been no magnitude 6 earthquakes around here, let's click that real quick, oh wait a second, here, let's, let's click off of all these, where, where are they getting these, ma see, see, what's up with that? Where are they getting these magnitude 6 earthquakes from? 11 magnitude 6 earthquakes in the past month? No, I do not believe so, my friend. Where are they getting this information from? Let's see here. Okay. Wait, what? Wait, that's a 4.6. Why is it? Oh, it's detecting the quakes on the Blanco Fracture Zone. Okay, we're not going to talk about those right now. That's ridiculous. I don't know why. That must be a glitch or something. I'm focused on Long Valley Caldera right now. Okay, let's go back. Let's turn back on all the magnitudes, shall we? Turn them all back on. Okay, here we go, right here. Okay, so 908 earthquakes in the past month. Yeah, that's a lot of earthquakes. Again, we did have another rapid fire swarm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do create an earthquake plot so you can kind of see. Here we go. Like I wish they could they could have you edit this earthquake plot. As to what it shows, you put A right there. It's a cross section. And put B right here. There we go. No! Oh, man. There we go. A right there. And B right there. Now we're going to view the plot. Okay. This is a time versus depth plot. We saw the first rapid fire swarm on the 15th. Actually, about the 13th. I'm going to say, yeah, the 12th and the 13th is when the re most recent strong rapid fire swarm occurred along Valley Caldera. And then we see a second rapid fire swarm in this same location. Notice that? This is the same freaking location, guys. Here, let me go back real quick. And you notice seismicity prior to this was like almost non-existent. And you can see the primary, the um, majority of the seismicity is occurring right under Mammoth Lakes, which is a neighborhood. Yes, people live within this caldera. Now, op that's opposite of what happens at Yellowstone, guys. At Yellowstone, people don't live there. People visit there, people hike there, but nobody actually really lives there. At Long Valley Caldera, however, which is possibly a more dangerous supervolcano than Yellowstone, um, people live here. Yeah, yeah, guys. I would not really want to live on top of a supervolcano, especially one... That has more magma, possibly, than Yellowstone does. I mean, look at all these earthquakes, guys. Uh, just just this bunch, just in the past, what, week or two, there have been 612. Just in this one little tiny location. That's not counting the other areas around the caldera or times previous to this. So it's very interesting that something has changed. It does seem like some type of fluid migration is associated with this. So we're going to take a look at the seismicity. From the closest seismic station, I think I'm going to use... I want to use a broadband station because I'm, I'm not liking the short period stations in this area. Let's see, that's a short period station. Let's use, let's use MMLB. Actually, no way, it didn't detect too much. I wish there was a closer broadband station. I don't think there is, though. No. No, not going to let me do it, huh? No, that's short period, too. Uh, you know what? Why don't we go with... 
why don't we go with MCB? All right, we're going to take MCB in the NC network and take a look at that for the most recent rapid fire swarm. If you want to see the seismicity from the, one of the closest stations recently for the previous rapid fire swarm, which was a little bit stronger than last night's, um, just go to my videos on my YouTube channel and look one or two videos back. I do talk about it and show some of the data pertaining to that. So let's look at this swarm, shall we? Which the largest of the swarm was a magnitude 3.0. And just within last night's swarm, there were 110 reported events with many other events not being reported because either they were too small or they were too closely spaced to be to uh, told apart. And you could tell um, a lot of these earthquakes and these rapid fire swarms can be hard to identify because they simply occur so fast that it's hard to separate the PNS wave arrivals, especially using, a, or excuse me, especially with automatic computer systems. So... And a lot of these were automatic, and a couple of the earthquakes were felt. I forgot to say the 3.0 was actually kind of far to the southwest, the south-southwest, just by a few miles or so. Very interesting focal mechanism we see right there. I don't know what type of earthquake that's indicating. I have no idea. Maybe oblique? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not great with focal mechanisms. All I know is it's not a strike-slip earthquake, so... 3.0 and negative 2.0 kilometers in depth in that area has high elevations. So that probably was very, very, very close to the surface and 11 people did feel it. Review status still says automatic, meaning a seismologist has not reviewed it. Well, as an amateur seismologist, barely a beginner amateur seismologist, why don't we take a look at it? So here you have the data from MCB and the NC network, a broadband vertical channel, and I do have a one hertz high pass filter added to get rid of those pesky background microseisms on broadband stations. Now we are going to take a look at some of these earthquakes, typical high range frequencies indicative of some type of fluid flow, probably rock fractures caused by something flowing around down there, guys. Not really thinking it's really magma at this point, not pure magma, could be magmatically derived fluids, you know, like hydrothermal fluids from the magma chamber. Because although Mammoth Lakes and the surrounding area within the supervolcano, although they don't really have geysers really at all, they do. it does have an active hydrothermal system underneath. It does. And it, there are volcanic earthquakes and volcanic swarms every now and then, something that even USGS does admit to. It does have that every now and then, and deformation as well. The 80s and the 90s were by far the most concerning of the Long Valley volcanic sequence there. Volcanic activity pretty much still continues at Long Valley, but it's just, it's never erupted. I mean, it's erupted a long time ago, but it's never erupted in our lifetimes from a lot of these swarms, and it probably won't in the future, in the close, close future, guys. But, a big but, we don't know. Nobody knows when volcanic eruptions will occur, really. It's just, because some earthquake swarms lead to nothing. Just like this swarm here that I'm showing you is led to nothing. But some swarms do lead to something, and it's you, you kind of need to figure out what is the difference. Like, what type of signals are associated with the ones that do lead to eruptions and the ones that don't lead to eruptions? And this swarm, we do see multiple earthquakes occurring pretty fast, guys. And right here, I thought this was a low-frequency earthquake, but you can see clear P and S-wave arrivals. Uh, this looks like a regional event, in my opinion, possibly. I'm not saying that for sure. It does kind of look like two low frequency earthquakes right here, guys. It does very look very similar. It's very possible these were low frequency earthquakes. Be now, I don't know though. I, I don't know. I'm very iffy on this. I, I was looking at this for a good hour trying to figure out if this was a regional event, and you know, I don't know. Uh, that's going to be up for you guys to decide because it does kind of look like two low frequency earthquakes in my opinion it does kind of but i believe this to be a regional event just in my opinion but again i could be wrong that'd be very interesting if those really were low frequency earthquakes so but you know this area has been seeing a lot of activity as of late i mean it's just been skyrocketing in the mammoth lakes area not necessarily associated to a fault structure because usually when you see earthquake swarms along a fault structure usually it would kind of propagate along the fault line, right? I mean, it wouldn't just be a simple blob of earthquakes being reported. I mean, there would be a clear trend, kind of like the Ridgecrest area when it ruptured. There's still a clear trend from the southeast to the northwest. And you can see the aftershocks follow along the fault line. But here, they kind of just seem to pop up randomly, really. And it's just this blob of earthquakes. I mean, there's no real 
trend. There's no real linear trend showing me that this could be tectonic. So I really do not believe this is tectonic in nature. It could be causing some local faults to crack and rupture just a little bit. Uh, but I do believe this is fluid migration somehow in some way. We'll take a look at the GPS deformation in just a second from the station that is right on top of this area, actually. Now, this is very interesting right here. We got something else. Again, possible low-frequency earthquake. Possible. Not saying it is for sure because it does look like there could be a P wave arrival for a regional event right here. But I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let's keep just keep going forward. A lot of microquakes, guys. Don't think I'll be able to make an analysis page on this. Remember, I'm very, very busy now. So my analysis pages really won't happen much anymore. Sorry to say. I will try to do as much as I can, though, and refer you to these videos. So a lot of the seismic stuff you're going to see from now on are going to be in this video. Not this video, but future videos. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. And then, boom, I believe this was the largest event, the magnitude 3.0 and negative 2.0 kilometers in depth right here. Down we're going P wave. Going forward. A lot of earthquakes right after. Again, that earthquake was the largest of the sequence, which was a 3.0 again. A lot of earthquakes, guys. So there were a couple possible low frequency events, but as you can see, there's no consistent low frequency tremor below 5 hertz in this band right here. You see really no tremor at all. Because usually harmonic volcanic tremor, which would indicate an eruption, would be between 1 to 5 hertz. It could kind of fluctuate and go down to 0 0.8 hertz and kind of fluctuate and go up to about 6 hertz or so. But typically, it's between 1 to 5 hertz. Typically. So, yeah, guys, here, let's go forward a little bit. We saw some additional earthquakes here. Very small. Again, a rapid fire swarm did occur last night. The second in the past week, week and a half or so. And then we saw some more earthquakes as it began to die down. And by far, the swarm has pretty much ended. It's pretty much gone into nothingness. I mean, there have been a few more microquakes occurring here and there, but it's starting to die down, that is for sure. Some weird electronical malfunctions. I mean, you can tell these are not earthquakes. No PNS wave arrivals at all on these. Don't know what those are doing there, though. I don't know. Something happened to this station. Uh, more microquakes occurring in rapid fire succession, rapid succession, rapid fire earthquake swarm. Oh yeah, my favorite type of swarm to monitor. So that's pretty much it, guys. That is pretty much it for the rapid fire swarm at Long Valley. Now, I'm going to take just a really fast look at the deformation for this area. From this GPS station right here, GPS MWTP, and as you can see, it is right on the top of this earthquake swarm so if there's any deformation associated to this we should see it starting right about now but it would take a good few weeks for those samples to come in to be processed to actually see if there is any long-term inflation and uplift of this area due to these earthquake swarms but we'll just take a look and see if anything has changed in the past few days we'll take a look at the past year of data for this gps station here remember one sample or one dot is taken once per day to eliminate really any errors at all all. So let's check that out right now. So here we are in Microsoft Excel and you can see we do have GPS data from MWTP and A12 UNR and we are going to take it from September 25th, 2018 to Delta U for uplift subsidence. Go all the way down right here and it, the last day, data sample for the station was taken on the 23rd, so two days ago. So we're going to see how deformation has been progressing on this GPS station, see if any or uplift or subsidence has been occurring since this earthquake swarm. These both of the earthquake swarms actually has, have progressed. Let's see if anything has changed. I did not want to do a line chart. Let's redo that, guys. Press insert. Go to scatter plot. There we go. Let's put a scatter plot up. There we go. Okay, now we do see seasonal fluctuations every now and then. Every year, we should see some type of seasonal fluctuations in the GPS plots. This is from one year. And the last seasonal fluctuation to do this was at about the same time last year. However, eh, it's looking like there isn't too much. There is a quick jump right here that probably is not related to seasonal fluctuations, which I find is very interesting. 
occurred at about, I'm going to say, let's see, the 305 line. Add 10 because of the chart. That's about July, late July, guys, because apparently this, the data for the station was out for a little bit for some weird reason. So maybe that's why there was a jump. So no really noticeable uplift much at all for this location, but it's still too early to tell. We still have to wait a few weeks to see if any long-term uplift is associated with these swarms and if swarming continues. It's very possible, so keep another eye out for a rapid-fire swarm at Long Valley Caldera. I believe there will be a third, possibly in the next week or two. I believe it. it I don't think it's over, guys. I do not think it's over. However, it might be weaker than last night's because last night's was weaker than before, than the one on the 15th or the 12th, I mean. And down here in California, we do have some earthquake activity along the San Andreas Fault. A little bit of swarming up here. And let's see, what is that near? That's near Pinnacles, California. Swarming continues in the coastal volcanic field ridge crest area as usual. Let's see if anything crazy happens since I was recording. Nothing too crazy right now. A little earthquake, a little 2.7 in Australia, which is interesting because USGS usually does not report that small of an earthquake down in Australia. So, very intriguing. Seismicity continues in Hawaii. Again, this is the past 24 hours of all magnitudes. No spasmodic tremor for over a month, guys. It's been over a month since we've seen any notable spasmodic tremor at all, which I believe is the longest time period without spasmodic tremor since I checked it out uh, in late January of this year. So I don't know what that means. Deformation, excuse me, inflation of the ground. The ground is swelling still in three locations on the Big Island. Um, the Mauna Loa Summit the Kilauea Summit, and the Kilauea East Rift Zone, and the southern flank of Kilauea continues to move towards the sea. Yes, it does, and HVO has even admitted that multiple times in their updates for Kilauea, and they're keeping a close eye on it, and so am I. So, that's it for right now, guys. I hope you have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you later.